save the situation, we will still remain in government. And so that is the whole position in relation to what happens. It is not a drop dead date. And by the way, it is my legal argument that look, some these deadline dates that are fixed are all in law called um, the, the word I they, they, they like to use is not mandatory. It is directory because it depends on so many other things in, in, in this country. You have to have other political actors. You have to have the GCOM stating their readiness for an election. You have to have uh, the president making the proclamation as to the dissolution of parliament. And that is why the CCJ never uh, endorsed the demand of the lawyers for the opposition. That is, that you call elections on or before the 18th of September. Well, let me just uh, at this time also acknowledge, uh, uh, just arriving, uh, uh, Bishop Juan Edgel from uh, the People's Progressive Party. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Stan. And uh, I'm happy that I can share this program with you. Um, just to let you know that this program was advertised that the leader of the opposition, Dr. Barjab, should have been here this afternoon with you. And I think he may very well still come. We were extremely shocked and surprised that you had a guest um, that showed up um, when it should have been an interview with Dr. Barajabio. Oh, yeah? And um, we didn't know that ministers could just walk into studios and demand to be heard. So, please, please, um, please. I didn't know. So it is, it, is, <laughs> it, it is a clear case that the caretaker government, um, they don't have much to do, and um, they're finding ways and means of being noticed and becoming relevant. But however, I'm happy to join the <laughs> conversation this afternoon. We can always um, get this with Bishop well, you I'm happy to join the conversation this afternoon. Just to say, there are some things that are very important. It's clear for everybody to see. This government has not demonstrated any good faith, any willingness to comply with the Constitution and the rulings of the CCJ. Mr. Ramjatan should check his phone now. Demerara Waves have just published a story which Mr. Keith Lowenfield, the Chief Elections Officer, has admitted to the press that elections can be held by September 18 using the list which validity has expired on April 30 by using a claims and objections period. Mr. Keith Lowenfield has just said that to Guyana, that elections can be held by September 18 using the very same list which, which its validity, that the list expired, the validity of the list expired on April 30 using a claim, an objection period that will revise it so as to have elections by September 18. Secondly, to so let me just ask you there for there. Can the chief elections officer uh, advise the president um, as to GCOM's readiness? Um, so that the president could make a proclamation. It or is, is, is it, that it, the it, role it, of a it is GCOM that has to uh, advise the president as it relates to its election readiness. We're not contesting that. The problem is, is that GCOM does not have a chairman at present, and you would understand that, in as much as the CCG has ruled that the issue of a chairman for GCOM should be put in place with utmost urgency. We are seeing everything else except that utmost urgency. So there again, we are having a delay tactic. But what is important for the people of Ghana to know, this morning, while the Chief Justice did not grant uh, uh, injunction or a conservatory order stopping the house to house registration, what the Chief Justice was actually saying to the nation, I am not aware that the house to house exercise the GCOM is embarking on has any bearing with an election that is to be held by September 18. If GCOM is doing its normal routine work of a house-to-house -house registration just to update its list or whatever it wants to do, uh, that's not her business. Her business is, however, she said, her understanding of the CCJ's ruling is that elections must be held by September 18. So all the frolic and the fun that is being, ha being had on the streets now by some people about house-to-house -house, uh, registration or no election 
has been since deflated because the Chief Justice's understanding, she has said it to the attorneys in the court today, that her understanding of the ruling and the consequential orders is that the election must be held by September 18. Since she said that, Mr. Lowenfield has now come up with a statement that has said he believes that they, he don't know anything about this list being bloated by 200,000 names. Apparently, he's not the one who told the president that. I don't know who in GCOM told the president that, because Mr. Lowenfield says he knows nothing about that. He will have to conduct an exercise to verify that that is true. And he's saying that the, the, the list that is currently which validity has expired in April 30, where the claims and objections period could be put in place for elections to be held by September 18. And that's exactly what the opposition has been asking for. That's the argument that we've been making. The no confidence motion was passed since December 21st. Elections should have been held by March 21st. The CCJ ruled that. A list was valid at the time. And that same list should now become the preliminary voters list. You go to a claims and objections period, people who are not yet registered could get their names on the list. People who need transfers could get their transfers done. People who have to have name changes because of marriage and the rest of it could have their name changes. And we could have an official list of elect electors to comply with the Constitution, Articles 106.6 and 106.7, and the rulings of the Chief Justice for elections to be held by September 18. Mr. Ramjatan's argument that he's been making that elections cannot be held by September 18 and that the government should remain in office after September 18 by way of the doctrine of necessity is a flawed legal argument. It holds no water. You cannot create the crisis and then claim the doctrine of necessity. The doctrine of necessity Mr. comes Mr. into Ramjitan, place. Would you like care to respond to that? Yeah, well, you know, that is always going to be the argument that we will have. He's indicating that indeed the elections can be held and he's now coming with um, this development that indeed um, the, the chief executive officer has indicated as much. I hope that is accurate. What read are you the waves. All right, we're going to read the Marara waves. I didn't read the Marara waves before I came in. But I must, the first point, I must tell you that I was invited here. I understand that I was supposed to be here this afternoon, so I'm not in any way interloping on your territory one. Uh, no, this is not our territory. <laughs> this is not all well, my own. Because you get the impression but I that, that you were supposed to be here. Well, I understand that. I were not here. supposed to be here. Well, please, I was told to come because it's the Stan Gavile and we're doing an interview and uh, Mr. Rabjatan is going to be here. And I, that is why I came. I was glad um, that you, I'm glad that you're here and we're debating. This is how it must be. My position, I have stated it very emphatically, that it cannot be held but the government the, is putting pressure on GCOM. Well, it is the government's drumbeat that the it is not the, it is the opposition that is putting a lot of pressure. It is the government to say that is that seeking indeed, the political influence. You can have GCOM. credible elections based on a certain. We've always list. had credible elections yeah, well, since 1992. Know, I, 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 certified by all exactly. international observers. <laughs> exactly. So why are we trying to spin this thing about? If you have elections by September 18, it won't be credible. It I is a saying it, it, because it, it, of the it, fact it is that a lot of people, the Guyanese people, and we should not do that. You are in government. You you are leading this nation. You should be responsible. Your statements that you make to the population should be responsible. They should re reflect if, facts. If, if, if they if must I, be accurate. If, if, if but I die here, we had we, we in all fairness, in all fairness uh, to both sides, we would have had an election, the 1997 elections. Um, in the, the, the court case, uh, the Esther Pereira court case, uh, it is factual that that was vitiated uh, by the court and declared null and void. Why? We would, have, we would have also had a case of in 2006, and I believe it was 2011, where there were issues uh, with uh, the election. It had never process. had anything to do and with the did, list, Stan Gavai, no? Yeah. It, had, it had nothing to do with the list. <laughs> no, you said we had elections. That Credible elections. Well, you know, the, okay. election, the, the elections in 1997. 11 elections, an AFC seat was taken away. We carried an elections petition that dragged out and out and out until the five years. It had started. nothing to do it with the list. To do, well, it has um, not. We, the issue here but is the list. Yeah. It is not the sidebar arguments. Let's keep the focus. The 1997 elections that were vitiated is because of bad faith. 
The what PNC is? sat with the PPP and agreed that you're going to use a special voter ID card. And if you didn't have this voter ID card, you can't vote. Mr. Ramjitan was in the PPP at that time. When the elections were done and the PPP won the elections, the same PNC that sat with the PPP and made that political agreement went to the court and said, a voter ID card is not a legal document for voting. And all the people who didn't get to vote because of the voter ID card were disenfranchised. And so let me just ask this question. Part paid by the let PNC. Let me just ask this question. Isn't it the same PPP that uh, in uh, 2018 uh, sat and agreed on uh, the, the house sums house. that were allocated for house to house that are now against it. S set, set an agreement on what? And the, house the house house allocation for, house for house. We never, we never agreed on house to house. Oh my goodness. And the need for house to house. Let me just make this very clear. Number one, when the GCOM submitted its proposals to Parliament, Mr. Ramjatan should be factual. The, the, the transmission of that submission never came to us. Because GCON was supposed to submit its documents to the clerk of the National Assembly, and the clerk of the National Assembly was supposed to submit all the documents to members of parliament, so we could study what is in those documents and make an intelligent decision on, on what, whether we're supporting. We had to fight in parliament to get those submissions done. And when you I got to them, when we got voted this, for when them. We, when we got the submissions. We're going to go to the parliament and we're going to see that when they we did got, not when we vote got, no. We, we did not be abstained. We didn't abstain now. We got, come on, that is always what we We did do. not vote yes. <laughs> we abstained because we had insufficient time to study the pile of doc documents. I was the one who requested it of the speaker. So you didn't and have I was the only documents. one who got the hard copies. My colleagues didn't have a chance to study it, and we raised that point with the speaker. He overruled us, and they went ahead with all the constitutional agencies. The government intended to hide the information and wanted to hurry through the budget on the constitutional agencies. We did not vote because we don't believe that we should deny constitutional agencies of a budget. Even if we voted yes for house-to-house -house registration, let's suppose that Mr. Ramdetan said we agreed. Even if we voted yes, what the is answer is there? You know? what, what, what we abstain, but what is the fact? The no confidence motion has overtaken that. The no confidence motion, once it is passed, says elections to be held in 90 days, three months. If you go to a house to house registration where the elections commission has advertised that elect the house to house registration will finish on October 20th, one month after. The CCJ would have ruled on June 18 that the pause button is lifted and elections must be held within 90 days or three months in compliance with Articles 106.6 and 106.7, where they said it is now immediately engaged. And while you will have enumerators around the country taking in paperwork across the country, I see they've done a good PR stunt to say 20,000 pe 20, people are already registered. But when you have all these papers coming in, and that, is, that, is, that, that exercise will be completed by October 20th. This information has to be inputted into computers. This, the fingerprints have to be extracted. They have to be sent overseas to an international company to cross-match. Every fingerprint has to be matched against every person who's registered to ensure that there are no duplicate registration. The last time that took 15 months. This issue of the demand of the of the of the, of the, uh, the government, this caretaker government of house to house registration, is a it's an argument that they're looking to use to buy time. They use the 34 is the majority of 65 argument, and they bought themselves seven months. They're hoping now to use house to house registration to buy themselves another year, and this is in clear violation of the constitution. It is totally against the rulings of the CCJ and the consequential orders, and Mr. Ramjatan and his colleagues in the caretaker government must do the decent thing. Cooperate with the GCOM. Let us agree to a claims and objections period. Let us ensure that all the people for uh, 18 years are on the list during that claims and objections period. Let us update and revise the list that was valid up until April 30th, which would have been the same list that should have been used for the elections by March 21st, as ruled by the CCJ, and let us get elections in the shortest possible time so that we could have democracy in Guyana. Anything after September 18th, 
This government is now a caretaker government. Mr. Ramjatan and all of his colleagues, including President Granger, will be illegal after September 18. We will no longer be a constitutional democracy. We will be anything else except a constitutional democracy. And it will appear that Mr. Ramjatan is happy to hang on to power and his colleague, President Granger and his colleagues, happy to hang on to power, living outside of constitutional norms and the rule of law. And this is offensive to the majority of the people of Guyana. Well, that is obviously with a lot of passion spoken by Bishop Juan Hill. But there is absolutely nothing that we are regarding doing right now as a government. Okay, you're on air. Tell please, the nation now. Please, you, Tell the nation of what you're doing to have elections by September 80. Outline for the people of Guyana. We would like elections to be held where nobody will be disenfranchised. And, and because and of the registration and process and will de register all the people who are not The registration home. process that involves house to house is going to be the perfectly cleansed system to ensure that we have. Because that buys you more not time. Only, well, you can shout, you know, Bishop. When I'm not shouting. Shout no, 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 please. You have your say just now. What's the problem? You know no, what? Not a problem. problem. Not a problem. Well, okay. My problem here is that. We are always in a democracy going to have disagreements. Mm -hmm. He is disagreeing that, okay, uh, house to house is not the best method. We believe that house to house is the best method. We also agreed in a budgetary allocation, not opposed by them, if that's what he wants me to tell him, not opposed by them that we must have house to house this year. Steve Suraj Bali, the former GCOM chairman, indicated since 2016 that we must have a brand new list based on a house to house in 2016. I have the entire document written by Steve Surge Valley sometime in a newspaper article in Starbuck News stating why it is that it is necessary. He also indicated that every eight year period you must have a house to house registration. That was his opinion. That, that, well, of course, he was the GCOM chairman. He was the GCOM chairman for 2008 elections, I think, and when we had a, 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 a house to house then, and in 2016, he indicated that yes, we must start getting the monies, we must start training the people for a house to house registration. As I indicated, we did not have the money around 2016, 2017, because of the fact we had so many other priority issues, and we knew that the elections was in 2020. So we indicated, well, what are the priorities? One big priority was the sugar industry. We had to get about $4 billion out of that money to the sugar industry for severance and all manner of things and to pay out sugar. When we did that, everybody, the, 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 the PPP was very happy. Now, when 2018 comes, we then made the allocation for a house to house and everything has been done in relation to that. The momentum, the movement towards that has happened. Okay, you want to bring in that this CCJ's ruling and all of that has upset that. It has not upset that. We are also in the process of getting a, 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 a GCOM chairman. And if the GCOM chairman then indicates, well, fine, there can be clarity in relation to this issue. That is, that he feels that an election can be held with a cleansing objection period, well, fine. If, however, the, the GCOM chairman comes and says that, no, it cannot be done, having studied the whole situation, we have to have a house to house, what happens? You will go to an election that will have the disenfranchisement of thousands of guys, we, especially young we, people. We, we, don't so, want, we don't want anybody to be disenfranchised. We want to get so, a message Will done. there be a compromise between... Let, let, let me just say, Stan, let me just say, Stan, the United Nations, the credible international organization, United Nations, they sent a technical assessment team to Guyana last year to check on what is needed for elections 2020. The report is now available. One of the things that that mission discussed was about house-to-house -house registration. And they said in their report, there is no evidence that house-to-house -house registration will produce a list that will be more acceptable than the process of continuous registration right now. The, this is not Ramjatan and this is not Edgel. This is the United Nations who know who have been given technical support to us. 
You know what has happened as a result of that? All the offer of the support of the technical people who should have been at GCOM helping GCOM, the former chairman of GCOM who was ruled to be unilaterally appointed and who had to demit office, he blocked all the consultancies from the United Nations being in GCOM. He blocked it. And that is one of the reasons why we have to keep going through the court system to get Mr. Patterson removed because that was one way the president putting his man as against a chairman coming through a process. That man took instructions from the president and the PNC. I don't know if the AFC had any role in playing because apparently don't, they don't exist on certain matters. But it was clear that they were, he was taking instructions. He, like a bishop. he, he was like he, a bishop. He was taking instructions from the PNC. You could imagine a man whose who's who's tenure is on trial, is signing an order in the dark of night in the same way in which he was sworn in <laughs> on June 11th to authorize household registration, where his legitimacy as the chairman of GCOM is being questioned, and then you don't gasset it, you gasset it after, you kept it secretly, and you did not do it. All of that is part of the transparent ploy of this government to come with an argument. It is the same 34, it's the majority of 65 argument. Foolish. Every school child knows it is not factual. Every school child knows it's not true. And you're coming again with another argument of a similar nature. House to house registration is the way to get a credible election. When you know you have continuous registration, every child 14 years and above have an opportunity to register. You go in the National Register of Registrants at 18. You're extracted to the official list of electors. A claims and objections period will solve the problem of those who were missed. And you're still going with the house to house registration because you don't want to keep elections now. And this well, is the issue. The lack of integrity on the part of this government. They're not acting with integrity. There is no good faith. It is a transparent ploy. When they went to the court saying, that 34 is the majority. It was laughable. Everybody knew. The, the, judge, the law lords at the CCJ said, Did that part of the Constitution, don't, we don't need to gloss. We didn't need, even need to. The, All right, you know, we don't need to go over it. And Mr. Ramsey, that brought in. It is as if now our two it courts of appeal judges who ruled that indeed it was 34, as if you know, there was absolutely no merit in their rationalization. But the CCJ you know, truth oh, no, that, that is exactly what they happened. They call it legal when matter. Your presidential, um, um, your former president, Barajagdo, apparently didn't know what two terms mean. And he arranged a Richardson to go and say that he could run a third term. But then didn't you? But uh, even if so, that is so, but even if that please, is so, is he running? Yes, is he running? He's what, complying what, what, with the rulings of the CCJ. Uh, exactly. Even if he did that, and he's we complying. Are, we are Why complying. don't you comply? We are complying. We are complying with By not keeping the elections in 90 days? You're like not. Like Mr. Ramjitan, tell the people of Guyana when the elections will be. Uh, Mr. Edgel and, uh, of course, uh, uh, Minister uh, Ramjitan, one of the things that uh, the, the CCJ did say is that all the political actors in Guyana mm -hmm. should come together and have a compromise at this. Uh, they did not uh, make. They didn't say compromise. They should. They should they, act. They in, should act in com in compliance with, with, the, cons with the Constitution. Exactly. And in good faith, um, to to make sure uh, that we get to where we need to get. What do you see in terms of uh, this happening from your end, and I'm going to take it from your uh, minister. Right? What needs to be done is for President Granger and his cabinet to do the first thing: resign. And if they resign, who runs the country? When they resign, they have publicly acknowledged <laughs> that they intend to comply with the rulings of the CCJ and the Constitution. After their defeat, they become a caretaker government. A caretaker government means the executive, the cabinet, is disbanded. It means there could be no approval of new legislation, no amendments to current legislation, there could be no implementation of any new policy, there could be no treaties signed, there no, no new agreements made, no major contracts awarded. So you have gone into what is called caretaker government. The only role of that caretaker government is to facilitate the holding of elections. Guyana is not in a state of normalcy. 
The president needs to act in good faith, accept the submissions of the six names that is not unacceptable to him, and choose one to be the GCOM's chairman, and let GCOM carry out the business of holding elections in 90 days. It is not left to GCOM to determine, well, you know, we might not be ready until February of next year. GCOM, as one of those constitutional actors, have to comply with the Constitution. So GCOM needs to sit down and says, look, we got 90 days to hold an election. What needs to be done? What needs to be procured? Maybe we need to apply for special concessions to forego some of these things to meet the timeline. Because the supreme law is the Constitution. You cannot keep dragging your foot and making excuses. Let's get the list with the claims and objections period, the election day staff hired, the procurement of the paraphernalia for the elections. All that is required to get an election stand is 50 days. Mr. Rogers, Two weeks, let me just finish this. Two weeks <laughs> to get nominations day going, where you could get all your candidates prepared, signed up, and 32 to 35 days after nominations day is an election. And the clock is ticking. And this indecent argument of doctrine of necessity, and you continue in government until the next government is sworn in, is unacceptable. Remember, they weren't accepting that they're a caretaker government since December 21st. There's nothing in the law like caretaker government. That's what they were saying. Even the president says, I don't know what you're talking about. They, we, we are the government. And it's the same argument they're sitting here today carrying. We remain the government until the next government is sworn in. But you're doing so illegally and outside of constitutional coffin. On this first point that we have to resign, we're not going to resign. There's absolutely you're not going to obey the Constitution? We are not going to resign obey the because we are let's, still let's in the government. You know, you have to resign the Constitution. We are not resign. going to resign. Let, There's absolutely uh, nothing in the Constitution that indicates a formal resignation. That has gone through by the CCJ and it has even gone through by the High Court. Announce your resignation. Uh, announce what? Because the next article says notwithstanding that, Resignation, whatever it when is, you, finish you, are, you continue in government. So if I were to what? Send in, who will the president send his resignation into? I could send my resignation into the president, but then I stop becoming a, a, a minister that will have any powers whatsoever with a resignation letter. So it is a kind of a legal fiction that is spoken about in that article. And that is what it is, because right after that, it is a, uh, you are still a minister performing the functions of government and minister. So they, that is the problem with the, 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 the opposition. They seem not to understand that. That is also what happened in Esther Pereira. In Esther Pereira, this argument was made. And the, Claudette Singh regarded it as the government will continue to be holding cabinet meetings holding their ministerial functions and all of that. It is all there in the Esther Pereira consequential orders. But they feel that you've got to go United Nations to come and indicate to us what we must be doing. Well, please, we have the experience. We've got the same textbooks that are written by the Australians and the Canadians, and we have been doing as we feel uh, that is in accordance with the convention now that the CCJ has ruled. But we are certainly going to abide by that ruling. The other thing about stating that elections must be held by 18th of September, they are pressuring, yes, and I could understand the opposition doing that. That is what is, happens in a democracy. But the people out there must understand too that we have an obligation to hold elections that will not see any disenfranchisement. And the coalition government feels that if it is going to happen that early, a number of things cannot be done and we feel that the best process of uh, doing this is to have that house-to-house -house registration, which also brings in a residency requirement. I want to talk a little bit about that. There are lots of displacement that have happened because of the new housing schemes in this country. A lot of people move out from very far distances onto other places. Their names, just like the president, you know, Parajag, their address is still state house up to now. And, and the, the, opposition, the, the president now is in still Durban Street. But there are lots of people that move from Till Skeldon and got to Parfit Harmony and a Regina come. What happens to them? House to house is the best 
uh, method to ensure that where you are registered, you will vote and not uh, uh, claims and objections period. That is what that, happens in a claims and objections well, well, period. Uh, when you, you do your transfers. There, there is a requirement that you have to now go to a center. We are saying that let the center come to the people at the house to house. That is what makes it easier in a house to house. A lot of people... And when you uh, go to uh, a house and somebody's no, not there, what happens? No, and the person can give, they, they, they give you a telephone number and say, well, we can come back on another day. They don't, don't finish with you there? M come on, that is the house to house. Mr. Govai, I've yeah. always regarded Mr. Ramzatan. No, please, very so what he is giving the impression I, that I, 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 Mr. Ramzatan, I've always regarded him as a very intelligent and learned man. I admire him for many things, and Mr. Ramzatan knows. But no, that in any mean. election, <laughs> between elections, people get married, they change their names. You move because you were renting, you now build your house. During the claims and objections period, that is what claims and objections does. People who are not on the register are added. Those who are dead, taken off. If you have changed your address, you do your transfer to your next electoral division. If, 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 if you have a change of name, you do the change of name. So the President Jardio and President um, Granger could get their correct addresses, regularized, and all the other citizens during a claims and objections period. You don't need to go and spend billions of dollars on a house-to-house -house registration for something that could be done in two to three weeks. That's why you have claims and objections. And for Mr. Ramjitan to make that argument means that he's running out of real facts to continue oh, no, pushing no, 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 no. this case. Final question for, yeah. for, 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 for both of you. One each uh, for, for both of you, sir. Uh, be, uh, so uh, let me go with you, uh, Mr. Edgel. Now, it is uh, that you're saying that uh, the house to house is not necessary. It is not. However, uh, GCOM, as it, it stands, is going ahead with house to house. Your party has put out a statement and says that they will not actually uh, participate in uh, this process. Uh, should this process continue until there is elections, uh, what would you say to your supporters? Well, Stan, you made it very clear, and I'm going to say it again this afternoon, the People's Progressive Party is not going to participate in an illegality. We will not be complicit with an illegality. The, the, the highest court in our judicial architecture, the Caribbean Court of Justice, has determined that Articles 1066 and 1067 have become immediately engaged. It is not left now to GCOM or the President to name an election date. The Articles of the Constitution that allows for a no-confidence motion, takes away the discretion of naming a, a date from the president. The president must now name a date within the parameters because when you have a no-confidence motion, it's not business as usual. You've lost your mandate, your term has been cut, and the only way you remedy that is by way of elections. On a normal process of things, this might be an argument for GCOM. GCOM went to the CCJ with Mr. Marcus, who I've asked, who hired him and who gave him his instructions, and up until now those questions have not been answered, and told the Caribbean Court of Justice that the earliest you could get a list ready was December 25th. The CCJ, having listened to Mr. Marcus, put in their consequential orders, all constitutional actors must comply with the Constitution. I don't care about GCOM if they're selling fish fries or, or, or they're having emancipation party or they're going to have a celebration for some retired staff. That's not the court's business. The court's business is you've got a constitution. If you remember Mr. Saunders, who held up the constitution and said to Mr. Marcus, what do you want me to do with this? This is why the court is here, to interpret and enforce the rule of law the Constitution. And the Constitution trumps Mr. Ramjitan's views. The Constitution drums Mr. trumps Mr. Granger's unwillingness to give up office. The Constitution trumps the drumbeat of Congress place of no registration, no house to house registration, I no election. Really the I Constitution really trumps so all of that. Continue. The Constitution trumps all of that. And what is needed, what is needed is compliance with the Constitution. And for elections 2019, what is needed is a roadmap from GCOM 
revise the preliminary list that was expired as of April 30th, get the claims and objections period, and let's get an election, and we will not support house to house registration as it is presently formatted and composed with a view of delaying the holding of elections. And that's very clear. We're not moving forward. But that is very clear on the part of the opposition. He's speaking on behalf of the opposition, I suppose. And I speak on behalf of the government for this one. And let me just say that we are going to tell our supporters to support the house to house registration, as has happened, and it has started. Um, and uh, we will, as best as possible, await the GCOM chairman's appointment. And the GCOM's chairman's appointment will then indicate to the president the readiness as to an elections in Guyana. Based on the list, based on so many other activities, administrative and otherwise, that they have to make. And with that, we are then going to make a calculation as to when we're going to deal with nomination day, when we're going to deal with dissolution of the government, um, dissolution of parliament, and all of that. As it is presently, parliament is still open, and everything else as, um, as per normal. So it is important to understand that we will have this division. This division will happen. And when people are going to argue the case that, oh yes, well, this is the constitutional timelines and so on. I remember a certain case in which Mr. Joe Hamilton, who is now with the PPP, indicating uh, when he was in the PNC at that point in time, uh, that, look, this timeline that you must not have a four months, um, uh, longer than a four month period before the next session of parliament can happen, Remember, we had a, um, a parliamentary halt in, in one of the elections just before it. Then uh, the elections was held. And President Jagdeo at that point was not convening parliament. He was not convening parliament. And the four months period for the convening up to the last one had passed. The court ruled that these timelines, because they, they wanted to argue the point that the elections now was invalid, the court ruled no. Timelines are directory because of the fact that you have already gone through a number of things that happened and all of that. So it is not necessarily mandatory. If we can hold an elections that is credible in Guyana, where people are not going to be disenfranchised, and it is going to go and happen on the 19th of September instead of the 18th of September, what happens? Are we going to say that that elections is, is fouled up? So this is what they are not understanding, that timelines depend on so many administrative um, actors and so many administrative activities to the extent then that it could very well be pushed back to the extent of making it a credible election. And I want to say that is our position on the issue. I could understand their position on the issue. And that is what in the debate out there with the members of the public who is like a jury, we are going to carry it to the public. He's carrying his to the public. I am using Sangavaya radio station here to carry mine to the public, and that's here. And that's my final word on it. M Mr. Ramsatan has just told the people of Ghana something that is very interesting. The government will hold elections when they are ready. Yeah. They will not when obey the constitution. Says they will not obey the constitution, Mr. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Ramjitan, for confirming <laughs> that, that, that you will hold elections <laughs> when you are ready. The bullyism continues. Oh, the bullyism goodness. continues. Oh, the bullyism right. continues. Right. Thank you both uh, for spending some time with us on uh, the hot seat. Uh, and it was really a hot seat. <laughs> yes. You know, I was so surprised when you walked in here. No, I did not realize that he came in. Well, well, if you were here, Mr. Ramnett, and I ought to be here, you know that. You know no, that. No, I, I did not do that. I did not do that. Uh, all right. From what I heard from Anna, Anna told me to do this.